So, a few months ago, I actually got around to watching Hans Zimmer's Masterclass. Better late than never, as they say. I made a video about what it teaches you and what it doesn't teach you. If you want to check it out, card up there and link in description. Spoiler alert. He doesn't actually teach you how to write music for the movies or indeed to compose music. That was a surprise, wasn't it? But it is filled with lots of interesting tips and tricks which you can pick up if you listen out for them. I've made a couple of videos containing some of them already. Check them out in the description. This one, I think, is his best composing tip ever. Now, when I tell you what it is, you might say, eh, or words to that effect. But I'll tell you why I think this is a really good tip, and if you're not using it already, how you could benefit from it. He says when he goes into his studio, rather than switch on and put his hands on his keyboard, he sits on his hands. Yes, that's the tip. I know I've had a few comments from people saying that I should sit on my hands when I'm making these videos. When I talk to people face to face, I don't wave my hands about like that. I have no idea why I do what I'm making a video, but I just do, and apologies if it upsets you. Now, whether that is a physical or metaphorical sitting on of hands, I don't know. But the point is, he doesn't touch the keyboard. And he says, if you put your hands on the keyboard searching for a tune, muscle memory kicks in and you are very likely to come up with tunes or harmonies, chord progressions that you have come up with before. Now, as a famous film composer who's written scores for over 150 movies, he absolutely does not want to repeat himself. So he says no to muscle memory and instead uses his creative abilities to think and come up with new tunes, new harmonies, or at least new ideas. Now, maybe you don't think this is an overwhelmingly magnificent idea, but at least you don't think it is so underwhelming that you've switched off. So let us explore how this can be used in a very creative and positive way. Now, speaking personally, I know exactly what he means about muscle memory. One of my favourite compositional techniques is to find a sound I like, sit down at the keyboard and play something and see if the sound suggests something to me. If it does, which occasionally happens, we're off to the races. However, that's not the end of it, is it? As you will know if you have written any music at all. But quite often what can also happen is I sit down at the keyboard for hours without coming up with anything. So is Hans saying you should come up with an idea before you put your hands on the keyboards? It doesn't totally elaborate on this, but I would say not necessarily. Now, I have tried this and I would suggest you try this as well. Just sit and see if you can come up with a melodic or harmonic idea. Now, there are musicians who can do this and do it incredibly and amazingly and incredulously well, that should be a word. Mozart apparently could form entire symphonies in his head and then go and score the things out. Beethoven used to go for a walk in the woods and come up with ideas for symphonies. I'm also reminded of a story by one of my favourite composers, Michel Legrand. He wrote the music for the Thomas Crown Affair, among many, many, many other songs and scores. I think he was writing the music for Le Parapluie de Cherbourg at the time. And he was on an aeroplane and he wrote one of the pieces of music for it. Now, he didn't have a laptop or anything like that. It just came out of his head and he wrote it down. When I thought about this Hans Zimmer tip, I realised I had been sort of half practising this already during my compositional process. So here's what I tend to do and how I tend to use it. Now, I suspect a lot of composers are like me. They'll get a sound, they'll sit down at the keyboard and try to work out some interesting riff or phrase or melodic idea. Now, this will get you so far. You can add layers to it, maybe some percussion, maybe a bass line, but there comes a point at which you need to develop it. And this is where I find this idea of sitting on your hands can be very useful. So here's what I do. I breathe. Sometimes I will play however much of the piece I have, sometimes just the last few bars. And I will try to imagine what might come after this. So I'm in the flow, I hear the piece, and then I try to come up with 
a section B, a melodic idea, harmonic idea, maybe a change of instrument, something like that. What would seem to follow on from this? Now, it doesn't always work. If I had a compositional idea that always worked, I would put it in a bottle and you could have it for free, absolutely. But quite often, I do find I get an idea. I will imagine something, a melodic line, a harmony line, a change of instrument, something that will move the piece on, help me develop the original idea. And I do this by sitting on my hands. At that point, I do indeed take the keyboard to try to work out what it is that I have imagined, but... I haven't got that much of imagination anyway, so it's generally not too difficult. Now, it doesn't work all the time, but I find when my fingers just won't come up with a section B, sometimes my brain does. So if you're still with me, I hope that made sense. Perhaps it's something which you do already. Perhaps you are one of those composers who can think of an idea in their head and then put it down on keyboard. If you're like me and usually rely on playing an instrument to come up with musical ideas, then perhaps this is something you might like to try. Let me know how you get on. Let me know if you have any more composing tips because I need all the help I can get. And if you have enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel, ringing the bell, thank you, so YouTube will tell you when I release a new video. And if you have enjoyed this video, I think you might enjoy these videos as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in the next one.